A few days later, Shield Maiden was on a late-night patrol. Autumn had set in, and the cool September air felt good once the sun had set. The brick had turned up nothing magical, so Gel Girl had been right. After checking in with the blue woman about her findings, she decided to have a random look around in some of the poorer neighborhoods of the city. There was nothing to go on yet, but she'd had a lot of luck locating Anubis, so maybe the same would happen for her now. Then she glanced into an alleyway and saw a familiar face. Oh my god, it's you! She blurted before she could stop herself. All six figures in the dark alleyway wheeled around at her. Five gang members and the woman with the fake baby stroller. That was months ago, and you're still carting around this poison? She hefted her shield a little angrily, starting forward. Then the guns started coming out. Boys, she warned, I carry a shield for a reason. Unless you honestly think you can stop a superhero with a handgun, I wouldn't. She lifted a finger at them. The one of them who hadn't pulled his weapon slowly backed up and against one of the graffiti-covered walls. Don't do it, dude, he whispered to his comrades. That's Shield Maiden! They ignored him, drawing their sights on the strange woman in the purple leotard. Waster! one of them shouted, and the bullets hailstormed down the alleyway. Coiling up to dash forward, Shield Maiden lifted her shield and charged wildly down the alleyway. She smashed headlong into the first man, cracking a rib and sending him sailing flat onto his back. Bullets sang and blasted off her shield and the wall and around her as she dashed in a zigzag. Whirling around, she smashed her shield into a second man, sending a flying haymaker into the third and choke-slamming the fourth into a dumpster. A bullet scratched her cheek before the gunfire stopped. Rounding on the remaining man, she dashed at him while he was feverishly reloading. Just as he lifted his weapon, she whacked it aside with her shield, leapt into a Lutz jump, and put a boot into his face. He recoiled so hard he somersaulted backwards before he hit the ground with a groan of pain. Standing amongst them, panting, Shield Maiden checked the drug mule and the one gang member that had surrendered. Shield Maiden pointed at him with narrowed eyes. Good boy, but you're still busted. He sank fearfully into the sitting position in front of her, not going anywhere. You, on the other hand... She crossed the alleyway and kicked over the baby stroller. Bags of white powder went this way and that. You had your chance to run from me the first time and quit. She seized the woman by the front of her shirt and threw her into an open trash can. But somehow I knew I'd run into you again. I don't do this because I want to, she shrieked, tugging this way and that to get free. Shield Maiden palmed the top of her head and pushed her down into the wide-rimmed trash can until she was almost bent in half. Ow! That, stop it! That hurts! So does the garbage you bring to my city. She nodded at all the drugs strewn everywhere on the alley floor. Now you're going away for a long time. Please don't turn me in. I didn't mean it! She begged, but Shield Maiden had already turned away from her and towards the guy that had given up straight away. Phone. She held out a hand to him. Gun, too. He stared at her for a few moments and then flailed to hand over his phone and give her his firearm handle first. She called the police. This is Shield Maiden. I have a drug bust of some description, and it looks like a big haul. A drug mule, too. She might know a few names and faces. She recited the approximate address. I've seen this lady before, too, so I bet she's... Clank! Shield Maiden dropped like a puppet whose strings had been cut. A splitting headache awoke her some hours after that. Moaning, she tried to lift a hand and rub her head, but it wouldn't obey. Uh, what's... She said blearily. I heard you were looking for me. It's all over the news. A man's voice said as her vision swam into view. A dingy brick and concrete basement greeted her, strewn with junk and boxes. 
A lonely computer sat plugged into the wall, along with an electrical generator and a workbench covered with strange instruments. A wiry man in a white lab coat and gloves was hunched over, carefully soldering something. Shield Maiden could barely turn her head. Where? She looked down at herself and gave a shriek of horror. She was fused into the wall. What did you do to me? She cried. I broke down the wall, put you in it, and then put it back, he said, gently putting his smoking instrument aside. Think of it like lying in a bathtub of stone. You just can't move. He watched her heave and groan, pulling with all her might. But no, she was encased in the brickwork. The bend of one of her legs was sticking out. The tips of her right-hand fingers could only flex a little bit. Her chest, shoulders, and face were visible, but held firmly in the stone. "'Your breakdown,' Shield Maiden whispered, trying to see him better. "'I never endorsed that name, but it certainly stuck, didn't it?' He turned around on his wheeled stool to slide across the room at her. "'I wasn't sure I could knock you out, but it seems you're as human as I am. Metal pipes can kill you with the right angle and the right amount of force.' He pushed his tiny circular glasses up his nose. "'What do you want? Let me go!' Shield Maiden snarled, heaving at her bonds. "'What do I want?' He paused dramatically with a chuckle. Well, I'd love world peace, a blowjob from Scarlett Johansson, and a complete independence from the world powers to finish my work, but we can't always have what we want, can we? He watched her struggle. But after my latest successful test, I thought Gel Girl might come running, not you. The, uh, the Shield Maiden. He put up air quotes that simply infuriated her. Well, you did just destroy a seven-story building. Did you expect to get a pat on the head? She snapped, writhing a bit. She stopped when he leaned close, admiring the coiling muscles in her shoulders and neck. Hey, 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 hey! Personal space, pal! She snapped. Or what? You'll whack me with your shield? He said, nodding towards the corner. Shield Maiden had to strain to see the golden circle sitting in the corner, leaning against the wall. It's much heavier than it should be. I tried to break it down into its base elements while you were out, but nothing happened. What's it made of? It's more than metal. Try not to worry about it too much. Oh, magic then. Science yet unexplored, he said, rolling his eyes. Magic is such bullshit. I can't remember who said it, but he said that science is indistinguishable from magic if it's sufficiently advanced enough, and the person looking at it is sufficiently dumb enough. My nose itches, Shield Maiden said innocently, derailing his thoughts. Oh, for God's sake. He leaned forward to scratch her nose for her. What a gentleman, she snickered. Is this the part where you explain your master plan to me, put me in a slowly moving death trap, and leave me behind to escape and fight you another day? Oh, you're cute. That's cute, he chuckled, leaning back on his stool. I could have just molded you all the way into the wall and let you suffocate, you know. But you didn't, and you took the time to capture me, so out with it. What do you want? Shield Maiden said. What do you know? A superhero with half a brain. You're not like Jell Girl. She took one look at my work, gave me a supervillain's name, and started fighting tooth and nail to get me thrown in jail forever. He rolled forward, reaching into some boxes, and pulled a cylindrical canister from one of them. It was slightly bigger than a soda can. For these. What is that? A grenade? No! It's my life's work. Let me show you. He turned and, flicking the button on top, tossed it into the corner of rubbish and old boxes. A wild crack of energy and light blinded Shield Maiden for a moment. When she could see again, the huge array of junk and parts and boxes was neatly arranged into cubes of raw material. Just like the apartment building, she murmured. He smiled in approval. Now imagine throwing a hundred of these into a garbage dump, 
or into a condemned old building, or a toxic waste dump, the world's recycling and infrastructure problems would be over, overnight, he said with a snap of his fingers, not to mention all the reusable materials. Ah, oh, you want me to see things your way. I want you to realize that I'm not some evil baby-eating monster that Gel Girl thinks I am, he said snootily, sitting back on his stool and rolling back to her. I want you to let me go and not bother me while I perfect my work. Not happening. You just made a hundred-plus people homeless with one of those things. That's not okay, Shield Maiden said stubbornly. That's destruction of public and private property and a whole list of other things. She flinched a little when he suddenly leaned into her face. Do you think I'm bad for doing something like this? Are you like her? He whispered, almost nose to nose with Shield Maiden. A bead of sweat went down the side of his face. She could see the unhinged frustration in his eyes. Shield Maiden grunted a little, unable to break the brick and stone that held her. Her left hand squeezed a little. She was palming her upper left leg. Do you think you're bad, cubifying people's homes? She whispered back to him. Testing is necessary, but I can tell you already think I'm some evil supervillain. He sighed aloud in frustration. So why not throw them into a garbage dump for testing? Because testing something like this has to be done under any and all circumstances, so I know it works on every combination of elements and doesn't hurt people. He said impatiently, going over to his workbench. Okay, I'll bite. Shield Maiden tried to keep him talking while she rotated her wrist. Painfully, she turned her left hand over and started feeling up and down her leg. Her leg pouch was down there somewhere, unless he'd taken it. Why all the illegal activity? Shouldn't the government be all over such a fantastic idea for recycling and infrastructure? He actually sagged a little, and Shield Maiden saw a tired look in his eyes. Oh, they were. Trust me, they were. Every department wants a piece of my work. He reached and took another of the little silvery canisters out, tossing it up and down a few times. For weapons. Weapons? Oh, yeah, he said. Imagine throwing one of these puppies into a bunker full of terrorists, or a stockpile of weapons, or even nuclear materials. He turned it over and over in his hands. Bam! Gone! He said, making a wide motion. Just a room full of confused naked guys and cubes of junk all around them. They wanted to weaponize it, Shield Maiden whispered, and you turned them down. The man that invented dynamite did it by accident, and I, he looked down at his invention, I made something less destructive, but measurably worse, he said. He held it up to her. I made these to make the world a better place, and the first words out of their mouths were, could we use this to destroy weapons and bunkers and people? Like I was building a fucking bomb for them. He gritted his teeth and turned away from her, hunching over the desk. I'm not a bad person. They are. The tip of Shield Maiden's finger touched the communicator in her pouch. It flicked open. Working from memory, she touched one of the buttons and put the pad of her finger against the speaker. She felt it vibrating. It was ringing. It stopped. There was a pair of short vibrations. Perhaps a hello? Shield Maiden tapped SOS as best she could several times. There was another string of vibrations. She tapped SOS again, more insistently. You've got a heck of a way to show it, busting down occupied buildings and working in tiny basements like this. It's that or the government catches me, tortures me for my blueprints and knowledge, and suddenly a new super weapon hits the market, he said. But I can see you don't care. I get it, I do. But I care that you did wrong, too. I saw naked women and children out there, and now they have nothing thanks to you. And yeah, maybe your invention is dangerous, but that doesn't mean you can do stuff like this and just walk. Shield Maiden said. She tapped SOS again. A small sacrifice for the greater good and good use of my work. To keep it out of evil hands, he said busily, turning from her. 
Picking up what he'd been soldering earlier, he moved it out of her field of view and behind a barrier of boxes. She heard him busily working for a long time. She tapped SOS over and over again into the communicator. Wait, no, she whispered, eyes widening. She twisted her wrist a bit further. She could feel the stone digging painfully into her wrist. She could feel it digging painfully into her wrist, sharp bits of stone scratching at her. She could almost feel her phone. Her smartphone was still in her leg pouch. Gel Girl couldn't find her because the communicator wasn't traceable, but her cell phone sure as heck was. Closing her eyes and lowering her head to concentrate, she used the tips of her fingers to trace the shape back and forth. The little camera lens was at the top, and the buttons were on the side. The mental image was easy enough. She'd used the device so much. Painfully, she gritted her teeth to reach just a fraction of an inch further. A crack went up the side of the wall, spitting a piece of concrete free. It clattered loudly to the floor, and she froze. He hadn't heard. Aiko's name was the first on her contact list, starting with the letter A, of course. She had no choice. She tap-tapped it. The phone vibrated. Doing the whole thing without being able to look was harrowing, if she was even a quarter of an inch off. She pressed the pad of her finger to the speaker. It was ringing. You're not falling asleep on me, are you? She startled when he returned, looking up. Break down, moved the boxes aside, and came out with his prize at last. I had to get the shell back on, pardon me. He chuckled. I wanted to make something a bit more mobile and conspicuous than a canister. He hefted it upright to show her. It looked like some sort of cannon. Putting his arm inside, he twisted the bits and the clamps activated. It whirred to life, silvery and glowing. That's more like it, he said, hefting it out. For some reason, Wanda was reminded of Samus Aran from the Metroid series. She'd played those games as a kid. If you shred my clothes with that thing, I will break out of this wall and beat your ass in my birthday suit, Shield Maiden said nervously. My dad gave me this leotard when I won my first ice skating competition. They're not cheap. What are you, ten? He said incredulously sagging. This is an important moment to me. You're just in time to see the opening test of my breakdown cannon. I've only had the canisters up to now. The birth of an evil supervillain, but for real this time? Gel Girl told me you kept some parts of her. Shield Maiden said with a scowl. Ugh, he said, annoyed with her. Turning about, he pointed his new device at the shining golden shield in the corner. Let's try this again. I've made some adjustments. Lifting his arm cannon, he gave a light gesture. The mouth of the weapon widened, and the cracks around its shell casing glowed bright blue. No, don't! Oh, right, right, right. You're right. You're right. He paused, turning to his workbench. Safety first, he chuckled, putting on some lab goggles. Turning dramatically, he fired! A beam of white light lanced forth, enveloping the shield in the corner along with a roar. The brickwork, the concrete, the floor, and more disappeared into the blast. Dust rushed into the air, dirt fell from the decrepit ceiling, and the entire building rumbled dangerously. Shield Maiden coughed, turning her head away in case something flew and hit her in the face. Breakdown coughed and hacked loudly. Okay! <coughs> Okay, setting eight may have been a little dramatic on my part. I apologize. <coughs> he waved his hand about with a laugh, waiting for the dust to settle. The shield remained, completely untouched, but surrounded by cubes of brick, concrete, and dirt. Well then, he said, sagging and setting his arm cannon on the desk. Another inconclusive test. Squatting in front of it, he touched the shield a little. It's not even warm. Wow. You're not made of the same stuff, are you? He said, looking over at her. Nope, I'm, nope, I'm just human. Shield Maiden saw the idea had already sparked in his eyes. 
well, if you're not going to see things my way and let me leave unharassed, I'm just going to have to stick you deep, deep into the earth where they'll never find you, he said with a shrug. A chill went down her spine and she started wriggling harder. Uh, setting three should be enough. I'll send you down about 200 feet. You'll suffocate quickly enough, don't worry. I need to skip town before Gel Girl finds me anyway. I would love to test this on her, but something tells me I'm not quick enough on the draw. He slowly flexed his noodly arms to demonstrate how heavy the device actually was. Let me go, Shield Maiden demanded, heaving hard this way and that. The crack in the wall widened, but he was busy readjusting the settings of his device. I can tell you're just not a good listener. Any guys in your life ever tell you that? Not a good listener? He said. He heard her stop moving and glanced up. She was glaring at him now. Oh, okay, consider that nerve touched. Well, never mind it. Since you're so set on me being an evil supervillain and not the inventor of the most fantastic recycling device ever created by mankind, I'll indulge you. He scrubbed his hair a little with his fingers, checking his lab coat and glasses. All the best inventors get called mad scientists anyway. I guess it's a compliment. He shook his head a little, and then smiled and pointed it at her. Ah, oh, what's something evil to say? Uh, oh yeah. Any last words, shield maiden? He put on a ridiculous voice. I like Ike. She snarked a movie quote at him angrily. He pressed the barrel of the cannon against her face. Shield Maiden squeezed her eyes closed. The basement window burst into a shriek of glass. Breakdown whirled around as fast as he could, but not quick enough. Gel Girl molded into being, springing up and back into her humanoid shape. Break down, just like I thought, she said, lifting her fists. Breakdown slapped the smartwatch on his wrist. The computer on his workbench suddenly blue-screened and started to smoke. Never enough time. Jesus, I talk too much. He scolded himself. Can't you leave me alone, you slimy bitch? He demanded. Get me out of here, Shield Maiden shouted. I've got the building loaded down with breakdown canisters, Breakdown said, hand hovering over his wristwatch. One touch, and the whole thing starts to come down. He pressed the button before anyone could say anything. Chase me, or save her, Gel Girl. Your choice. Hefting his arm cannon, he turned and dashed for the stairs. Gel Girl looked at him, and then Shield Maiden, and then him, and then back to her. Dang it! She swore, rushing to Shield Maiden. A loud string of bangs and flashes of light pulsed through the building. He's probably strapped his gizmos to the load-bearing columns. Let's get out of here. I'm stuck! Shield Maiden heaved against her bonds again. Gel Girl threw herself against the cracks and spaces that she could reach into. Her body flowed into even the tiniest crack and started expanding. The entire wall groaned. Hang on! Got it! She tore the stone and mortar away with Shield Maiden's help, and the purple-clad woman broke free with a rain of gravel. She fell to her knees for a moment, a little numb, but quickly sprang up again. You're free! Let's go! Gel Girl seized Shield Maiden's hand and started to roughly pull her along towards the stairs. Without warning, a metal support beam crashed through the ceiling and smashed right through Gel Girl's body. She let go, looking down at herself. A 4x4 four four of solid steel had crashed through her shoulder blades and out of her stomach. Oh my god! Shield Maiden recoiled in horror. Gel Girl looked down and seized the beam between strong hands. I'm fine, I'm fine! Go, go, go! Gel Girl dislodged herself, tearing her body almost in half and instantly reforming with a grunt of effort. They ran for the open basement window Gel Girl had arrived through. Hefting Shield Maiden up and out into the alleyway beyond, she splashed herself out and reformed as the building began to teeter. It's all coming down! Keep running! she shouted. Shield Maiden tore out into the street, rushing a few buildings away as the entire thing teetered, teetered, and then fell into itself like a shell. The building was hollow inside. There was nothing to fall down except for the outer walls. Gel Girl caught up to her at last as they shielded themselves from the wall of dust that rushed to them, coughing and hacking until it settled. Y'all okay? Gel Girl said, touching her shoulder. Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay. 
Shield Maiden said. Wait, no, my shield! She whirled around, looking at the wreckage. Oh, it's buried, she said, running her fingers through her hair. Not quite, sugar, Joe Girl said, turning from profile to straight on. Shield Maiden's shield lay suspended inside her body. Who? Blah! Her body spat it out as it splattered across the ground with a splash of blue slime. Whew! Shield Maiden knelt to pick it up, and Gel Girl ran her hands over it to clean off its face. Thanks. You're a lifesaver. I'm glad you found me. I don't thank me, sugar. I wasn't the one that found you. Gel Girl nodded skyward. Shield Maiden winced, but slowly made herself look. Laser Wolf hovered in the air with his jetpack several stories up, holding an unconscious breakdown by the scruff of his lab coat collar. His arm cannon had been smashed and his forearm along with it. He's all yours, ladies, Laser Wolf said robotically, slowly moving down and dropping breakdown at their feet. Without another word, he turned and rocketed away into the night. Shield Maiden knelt to check that he was still breathing and nodded once. Joe Girl offered the same tomboy smile she seemed to be so good at. Pretty clever using your own phone as a beacon, tapping SOS, Shield Maiden. She smiled. Thanks. He, uh, he got me off guard there, Shield Maiden said, touching the back of her head. The painful lump there made her hiss with pain. How'd you find him, anyway? She wanted to know. He found me, actually. Shield Maiden filled her in on everything Breakdown had said and done to her. Yeah, sounds about right. Preaching about the misuse of his inventions, but not hesitating to hurt and kill people in the meantime. Can you imagine falling seven stories and walking away? No. Half a dozen people from that building died, sugar. Jell Girl said, shaking her head with a sigh. Do you think he's right? That when he goes to jail, the government will just grab him up to make him make stuff like this for weapons? Shield Maiden reached and with great strength pulled the halves of the smashed cannon apart. His arm looked broken. Laser Wolf must have crushed his arm with one giant robotic hand. I don't think so, no. No government official is going to want to use a supervillain's products. It's bad PR, you know? Besides, he'll do a lot less harm in a cell than he will running wild doing stuff like this, Joe Girl said, nodding towards the collapsed building. The road to hell and all that good stuff. Yeah, yeah, I guess so, Shield Maiden said. There really wasn't a perfect happy ending for this one, even if they'd caught the bad guy. You really saved my skin back there, thanks. She offered her hand and Joe Girl took it. They shook, smiling at each other. A good team up? Joe Girl offered, turning to walk down the sidewalk with her. If by team up you mean I got captured and had to call your girlfriend to have you come and save my sorry butt, then yeah, good team up. Shield Maiden winked. Joe Girl laughed, nodding that it was true. You're a pretty smart girl, you know? Joe Girl nodded as they walked. Just like she says, are you going to lecture me about friendship and forgiveness? Shield Maiden ribbed at her a little, smile fading. Nope. That stuff is between you two. Tain't my fault if I'm a mutual friend, you know. Sometimes good people do bad stuff with the best of intentions. It's up to you to see if she's worth forgiving, not me, Jill Girl said. I appreciate that. Shield Maiden looked up at a digital clock on the side of a closed business. It was almost 5 a.m. God, I'm exhausted. If we're good, I think I'm going to turn this guy in and head for home. Sounds great. Jill Girl's arms extended out into long, floppy tentacles, and she wrapped Breakdown up in her embrace. Shield Maiden threw the pieces of his arm cannon into a dumpster where no one would ever find them. Going to a help station on the corner, they called the police and fire department to see to the collapsed building and handed Breakdown over to the police. Good work, you two. This guy's been on the nationwide radar for over a year. One of the police women stopped to thank them personally. He'll be going away for a long, long time. She shook both their hands, one after the other. Oh, Shield Maiden, we got those drug dealers you called us for. Same lady with the fake baby stroller from your last report months ago. Drug mule, 
Shield Maiden put in for Gel Girl, who nodded. Did you get all of them? Six men and the mule herself, yes, she nodded. All behind bars, confirmed, thanks to you. You've really been working double time tonight. Don't you ever sleep? I was on my way to do just that, I think. Shield Maiden smiled, nodding. After giving a short summary of what happened to the police and thanking Gel Girl again, she was away. The sun was already rising and she hadn't slept a wink that night. Well, beyond when she'd been belted over the head with a metal pipe. Had that been three hours? Four? My head... She complained, heading towards her hidden van a few blocks away. She stripped inside and got back into her street clothes. Driving away into the wee hours of the morning, she went to report back to the home of the benefactor, but paused. She was a big girl. One hit over the head didn't need a magic potion to fix. Shrugging and deciding it would be okay, she headed for home and an ice pack in the meantime. Wanda Summers arrived at home at around six in the morning, sighing in relief as she shut the door behind herself and locked it. It was a simple two-bedroom apartment. She dropped a three grand deposit, and the landlord had been more than happy to repaint, replace the carpets, double-check the piping and wiring for her before she'd moved in. The place even came with a titanic refrigerator free of charge. It had taken her all of two weeks to find and furnish after she'd briefly moved in with the benefactor. She wasn't about to share a bathroom with Anubis with all his shedding and disgusting eating habits. Yes, this, and yes, that got on her nerves after a few days. Nursing her head and getting a zippy bag full of ice, she wrapped it in a paper towel and rested on her sofa for a while. Owning an antique store, she had a hodgepodge of furniture tucked away in the back. Paying a moving company to take one of everything to her new place hadn't been hard. I mean, sure, her couch was from the 1970s and her TV was a box with bunny ears, but she had a coffee table and a bed and plenty of seating for... Well... It felt empty, really. Wanda looked over at the empty recliner. Aiko would sit there to tap away at her laptop, probably doing laser wolf stuff, really. Her gaze wandered to a big armchair. Darren would have sat there, flipping channels and telling her all about his latest photo shoot or advertisement gig. And Jasmine, well, she'd sit on the couch next to her, of course, putting her shield maiden attire in the washing machine. Wanda went to bed feeling sore and lonely. Being a superhero sucked sometimes. Fewer friends. No man to hold her tight and please her. Weird sleep hours atop that. It sucked bad. When she awoke, her head had gone from a stabbing headache to a dull, pulsing ache. She looked at her ancient alarm clock, still dusty from sitting on the shelf in her store. Past one in the afternoon. She picked up the phone to call her best friend. Hey, Wanda! It was Jasmine. What's up? Hey, Wanda said sleepily, sitting up and trying to sound more awake. Um, are you, are you busy right now? No, what's up? Well, I've, uh, I, I've finished all my moving and stuff. She scratched her cropped hair a few times. I've got this huge closet full of board games and, and no boyfriend to play them with anymore. That sounds like a personal problem, Wanda. Jasmine ribbed her a little, giggling. Will you just come over? I've got drinks in the fridge. Wanda offered a little more insistently. Should I bring Aiko? Jasmine said curiously. Um... Wanda sat silent for a long time. Sometimes good people do bad stuff with the best of intentions. It's up to you to see if she's worth forgiving. Are you guys still fighting? Jasmine said. When Wanda didn't answer, she continued. Not telling me what's up with you guys aside, maybe try to be in the same room for a little bit. I, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring Aiko, Wanda said with a lot of effort. That a girl, Jasmine said. We'll be over soon. I got a housewarming gift. She sing-songed and hung up after that. A quick shower and some grooming put Wanda in a much better mood. 
She tidied the apartment a little, put a scented candle in the bathroom, and made sure none of her laundry was lying around the place. By the time the clock read three, everything seemed okay for guests, and there was a knock at the door. Wanda heaved a deep breath, preparing herself mentally. She wasn't ready to forgive Aiko, but Gel Girl was right, and so was Jasmine. Squaring her shoulders, she took a deep breath and made herself smile. She opened the door. Happy housewarming! Jasmine thrust a heavy box into her arms, almost bowling her over. Oh my god, it's so cute! She was halfway down the hall, exploring, before anyone could say anything. Come on in, Wanda smiled. Aiko stood awkwardly in the hallway, looking up at her. They stared at each other for a short time. There's two bedrooms! You're getting fancy on us, Wanda! Jasmine said from down the hall. Seeming to remember she was holding something, Aiko held up something large and flat for her. Thanks, Wanda said carefully. Happy, um, housewarming, Aiko said, not quite meeting her eyes. Um, c come in, Wanda said just as awkwardly, stepping aside. Aiko came in and Wanda shut the door behind her. Well, go on, open it! Jasmine had already seen every room in the apartment and had come back to the living room. Wanda sat with the big box that Jasmine had given her. Pulling it open, she reached inside. It was a fancy-looking record player. No, it was more than that. It had a radio, a CD player, and a tape player on its front face. It looked like fancy oak wood as well. Like it was meant to sit on a side table or something. Oh, wow, she said with a wide smile. I love it. Jasmine swatted Aiko without taking her eyes off Wanda. Um, oh, open mine too, Aiko said. Wanda ripped off the plain blue wrapping paper to find a record for her record player. Beautiful saxophone medleys, it said. You uh, always listen to jazz when you work out in front of the TV at the house, Aiko said looking at her folded hands in her lap. Thank you, Wanda said softly, looking over the back. It really did mean a lot, having someone that noticed such tiny details. Coughing a little, Wanda set up the music box and flipped the lid open so she could mount the record. She plugged it in, then set the needle. The music was beautiful. Wanda tilted her head back and closed her eyes for a moment. Her dad had gotten her into slow-paced jazz. The sort of background chamber music you could read to, or make love to, or go on a run to, or just relax to. The slow, moaning, greasy saxophone that really made things seem calm and heavy, like a dark wood English gentleman's study on a rainy day. All right, sounds great, Jasmine said, pumping a fist in the air. Echo did pretty good, huh, Wanda? Uh, oh, oh, yeah, she did. Thank you, both of you. Wanda offered a careful smile. All right, so if you're seriously going to pull us into this board game get-together thing you did with your ex, I gotta see what kind of beer you got that's going to make this work, Wanda. I'm sorry. Jasmine got up to go inspect the fridge. Oh, wow, she said from the little kitchen. Oh, thank God I didn't buy you that toaster oven and said you've already got one. Aiko gave a rather timid smile when Wanda looked at her. Well, at least they were in the same room together. Wanda rose to go to her hallway closet. She owned a business, so there was no shortage of old board games in her closet. Blackout Night with Darren had always been interesting, but only occasional board game nights with her friends had ever happened. Maybe this was the start of a new tradition. She pawed through the stacks and then flicked the light on so she could see better. Wanda became aware that Aiko had followed her to the closet. Why don't you pick, and I'll go make sure Jasmine doesn't break anything in my kitchen, Wanda said. Aiko nodded, leading into the closet. Thanks for having me over, Aiko said quietly. Yeah, Wanda said. They stared at each other for an awkward moment, but neither said anything. It was a start, they both supposed. I know you're not ready to forgive me, or if you're going to forgive me, but part of that, I imagine, is because I never actually said I was sorry, Aiko said. Wanda stared at her. 
so I'm I'm sorry. Wanda gave a slight nod and touched Aiko's shoulder, but then went to go and check on Jasmine like she said she would. 